Welcome to MIG Monday. I'm Paul. Today I want to discuss one process versus another process. The MIG welding process versus the self-shielded process. Uh, now, I use the term MIG welding and that's what everybody refers to it as, but just, just for general purposes, let's talk about what the way the American Welding Society identifies these processes. MIG welding is officially GMAW, which stands for gas metal arc welding, and the flux cord uh, arc welding process or self-shielded process is referred to as FCAW, meaning flux cord arc welding. Another thing is, is terminology. Uh, a lot of people, when they talk about flux cord arc welding, they call it inner shield. That's a brand name. And sometimes the whole process gets identified by stuff like that. Very similar to uh, countertops, for example. You, you know, the material on a countertop, everybody calls it formica. Uh, but actually, it's plastic laminate, and Formica is just a company that makes plastic laminate. How nice to have your company name associated with the actual product. That's pretty slick. <clears throat> anyway, we want to talk about the differences between these processes. <clears throat> if, they, if, if they all did the exactly the same thing, there'd be no need for so many different processes. But realistically, each of those processes have a distinct place. Um, sometimes there's some crossover where you can use either one. But in general, each process has a specific goal or, or a thing that it can do better than the other processes. So I want to start with, with MIG welding. We've talked about MIG welding in the past. Uh, what I want to do is I'm going to do some welds with MIG, and then I'm going to do some self-shielded welding. And we'll point out the advantages uh, and where the MIG welding is superior and where the flux cord uh, products are superior. So uh, we'll do a little welding. One of the places where the MIG welding excels is indoors. Uh, it, it's gas shielded, so you have to worry about air movement. Indoors, that's usually not as much of a worry. Flux cord, no problem with air movement. So that's really a good idea for outside. Can you use it inside? Sure. The disadvantages of doing it inside is that it does usually create quite a lot of smoke. So you either have to wear a respirator or get some kind of fan going to clear the smoke out of your garage or your workshop so that you don't you know, get exposed to too much of fumes from the welding process. The MIG welding, can you weld outside? Sure you can. However, what you have to do is make sure you don't have the gas shielding disrupted by the uh, air movement that you generally find outside. So you can weld outside if it's a very calm day or if you have screens. You can see here, I'm in a shop. You can see these screens behind me uh, are there just to prevent air movement because we have open overhead doors here and that are open and closed during the day and it, you know, it can certainly change the air movement around. So I put up these screens so that I don't have to worry about that. So anyway, we're gonna make a couple of MIG welds in here and then we're gonna transfer the whole thing outside and we'll do some flux cord welding outside and we can see the differences on what happens with some of that uh, uh, processes when we get into different locations, okay? So let's, let's give it a shot. Okay, I have my safety gear on, and now I'm gonna do a, just do a MIG weld. Uh, just to point out the situation I'm in, the advantages of the MIG welding process are that it's, uh, you can weld indoors without making a lot of smoke. Uh, that doesn't mean you never have to worry about you know, inhaling the fumes and things like that, but it doesn't make as much smoke as the uh, self-shielded process does. Uh, so this is one of the strengths of, of this particular process. One, you can control spatter, you can control uh, you know, your clean up a little bit, and uh, you know, it's, a, it's a nice clean process. So I'm gonna make a quick weld and then we'll uh, continue on, all right? Here we go. clean, maybe a little bit, of, uh, little bit of spatter to clean up, and there's no slag that I have to wire brush off or anything like that. Basically, a little bit of chipping away the slag or, or a little bit of light grinding and it's ready for paint. Uh, you can do it indoors, uh, and so there's, that's one of the advantages of this particular process. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're also gonna do, and we're gonna weld with some some of the flux cord products so that we can see, you know, and illustrate the strength of the flux cord product, all right? All right, now I've switched the machine over. You remember we just did a MIG weld, so uh, I've switched the machine over to flux cord, and that, of course, involved 
uh, changing the wire, changing the drive roll, uh, and you know, and the polarity. So uh, now, I mean, rather than go over that all step by step, I just took the liberty of doing that because in a previous video we did show a, uh, a complete changeover. So if you check the link below or click on the link below, that'll take you to that video, uh, which will give you this, this step by step. Okay. All right. Here we go. We're gonna make a we're gonna make a self shielded weld. We're indoors. Uh, the downside to the self shielded weld, or what to look for here, uh, it's gonna make a good weld, you know. But the idea, the strength of that process is welding outdoors where air movement isn't so much. One of the downsides of this process is the amount of smoke that it's going to put into your into your garage or your or your shop, unless you have smoke exhaust to, to deal with that. Okay, so let's make a weld and we'll see what we get. Okay, now I'm guessing you saw a good bit of smoke. Uh, now, of course, we have slag coverage, but also, before I wire brush it up and take the slag off, I want you to see the amount of smoke that's on the on the plate that wasn't there, you know, before we started, of course. So that's an indication we got a pretty smoky process. All right, well, let me let me get that slag off of there, and we'll take a look at the weld. So we got a nice weld. We've accomplished the job. Remove the slag. The only downside to this welding indoors, like I said, is the amount of the amount of slag and the cleanup that you might have to do. Uh, but you know, this will deal with air movement much e more easily than uh, than the MIG process. But again, you have the accompanying smoke. Uh, so, uh, and of course, the reason for that is all the deoxidizers and stuff that are in the flux. To deal, to you know, to keep the weld protected from the atmosphere uh, that you don't have when you're doing the MIG welding process, because that's part of the job of the gas. All right, all right. Well, let's going to move this whole operation outside, and we'll do some more welding. All right. So now we've moved outside. Uh, as you can see, all I had to do is bring the machine. That's one of the big advantages of the flux cord process. Uh, you don't have to lug around a bottle, and you know, which weighs quite a bit. And all you got to do is pick up the it's a handy little portable machine, pick it up, take it outside, plug it in. Now I am outside, it's a little on the breezy side, the breeze just comes and goes here. Uh, I'm kind of on the corner of a building which also can kind of make the wind whip around the corner a little bit more, making MIG an even less ideal product for uh, welding outside. Now if I was melting wig, uh, if I was welding MIG, uh, then it would be really prudent for me to put up some kind of blocking, wind blocking or something to stop the wind. Here with the self-shielded flux cord product, I don't have to worry about that. I can just go ahead and make my weld. So that's what we're going to do. Also, you'll, you know, as I demonstrated earlier, the smoke that comes up uh, inside, which can be a problem outside here, it just dissipates into the air, and I don't have to be as cautious about it. You still want to keep your head out of the fumes so you don't, uh, you know, you don't breathe it in, but uh, it's going to dissipate in the atmosphere and cause much less problems for you. So let me go ahead and try and make this little weld and uh, we'll uh, see what we get out here, okay? Okay, so there, there we have the, the breeze not going to be an issue. Nice, easy weld to make. No muss, no fuss. Could just clean off a little bit of slag. Well, let me here, let me show the show the camera here a little bit so you can maybe see the weld a little better in the with the sunlight shining down on it. You see, like just like when we were inside, still have a lot of smoke on the 
on the surface of the weld metal. I mean, that obviously that wire brushes off, but that's just, uh, just another reminder of this being a relatively smoky process. All right. So, get the weld there, get it cleaned up, chip off the slag, and we've got a successful weld for outside. All right. Okay, so now we're back inside. Just want to summarize what we've kind of done here. Uh, we made a MIG weld. We utilized the strength of MIG welding. One of the things that's best suited for is welding indoors because you don't have air movement. Uh, it's clean. Uh, there's, there's uh, especially with the small hobby shop type welding machines, uh, you have inexpensive gases you can use. And you can weld a variety of thicknesses as well, down, even down to some fairly thin gauge material. Once you get too thin, then there's other processes like TIG that would be perhaps better suited for that type of material. But it, within its range, uh, MIG welding is, is uh, tough to beat for the home hobby guy. But if you have to weld outdoors, and that's one of the things we did, you know, I took the machine outdoors uh, because not always, the projects aren't always indoors, folks. A lot of times they're outside and you have no choice but to weld outside. And there, MIG welding starts to become a little bit of a hassle because not only do you have to move the machine and everything outside, but you also have to lug a gas bottle out there, and those get pretty heavy. And then when you're moving it around, you have to worry about dropping it or you have to fasten it in place. All the gas bottles I use here in the shop are all chained to the bench so they don't have to worry about them falling over. It becomes a little more problematic when you're outside uh, if you don't have an actual bottle rack to keep it in. So one of the strengths for outside welding is the self-shielded process, the FCAW. Uh, the, the strong suit there is that air movement isn't a factor. You can weld out there in a, in a pretty stiff breeze and not have any compromising of the weld because the, all the things that shield the weld are in that flux core. They clean and deoxidize and float impurities to the surface in the form of slag, which then can get chipped off and wire brushed, and you've got a nice weld uh, of, of substantial quality. So there's a real place for that, and you don't have the you don't have to haul a bottle around. So you've got you know it's, it's economical in that sense that you don't have to buy a gas. Uh, the weak point of it is if you're welding indoors, there's a lot of fume, and I think we demonstrated or you could see in the video uh, quite a bit of fume coming up from that weld. So outdoors, it's tough to beat self-shielded. Indoors, it's kind of tough to beat MIG within their strong points. Uh, I did mention earlier that there is another uh, shelf, another cord product called the gas shielded uh, flux cord arc welding. And uh, those are flux cord wires that also utilize a gas. Uh, the main advantage of those, and, and those you really aren't gonna need those in the home hobby type field. Uh, the advantage and the strengths there is uh, with a cord wire like that, uh, you have a, uh, the ability to add alloying ingredients to make higher tensile strength welds or even match alloys in your base metal things that are a little more technical than what the home obby guy normally gets to. Uh, it does have the same limitations as MIG, uh, even though it's a flux cord wire because it still requires a gas shield as well as the ingredients that are in the cord thing. So uh, just be aware that it's there, but like I said, for the home hobby person, that's really not much of an issue. Uh, and you have this, you know, you have to have the bottled gas. So you have the same kind of constraints that you would have with the MIG welding. All right, so hopefully you learn something and, and realize that you can take advantage of the strengths of the different materials. And yeah, there's some crossover points uh, where one is okay but not as good as the other but still acceptable. And that's for each individual to kind of decide where they're gonna be and how much money they want to expend to make, make sure that their weld is a little higher quality. So anyway, I hope that answers some questions and uh, we'll um, see you next time on Make Monday. Well, if you learned something today or like what you saw, please feel free to subscribe and keep an eye out for new episodes every MIG Monday.